All right, hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. So this is another whip and chat between Mindy and I. And in this one, we're gonna be answering some tag questions. We're gonna be answering the same questions. So obviously we're both gonna have very different answers. Um, I need to get my color out. Um, but yeah, we have about 15 questions that we're gonna answer. And I'm just going to be working on the Josephine wall canvas. This is the, uh, let me show you guys, the heart of the tree. And if you remember, she is working on Horizons, which is the little girl sitting on the lotus flower that's kind of like swimming and she's looking down um, on like some town on the bottom. So yeah, um, these canvases are available through Mystical Diamond Art. The link to that will be in the description below. Um, as the time that I'm recording this, there is still uh, plenty of canvases available to order. Um, and I'm hoping that they don't run out. I, I don't see them running out, to be completely honest. But you never know. So, um, welcome everybody to my channel. I always forget to thank everybody and welcome you guys to the channel that sort of thing. I don't know why. I, I think I'm just not used to having so many people watch me. Um, but, you know, um, you grow and you learn to do things differently. So hopefully I can start remembering to welcome everybody to the channel more often and not just like feeling so rushed in the videos. So hopefully I can get through these 15 questions in a decent amount of time. Also, I don't have that much storage on my phone, so there's that. So the first question we're going to start with is, are you close to anyone now that you initially disliked? And the answer to that is yes. Uh, I don't really have any friends. I've talked about this in other videos um, if you guys want to hear more about that, like, go look at, um, some of the who the fuck am I videos because it talks about that. But, um, somebody that I am close with now that I initially disliked is actually my husband. Uh, my husband and I were actually friends first, if you could call it that. And I actually really hated him. I don't know if hate's the right word. Hate's a pretty strong word, but I highly disliked him. Um, he was very annoying. He is, was shallow to me, um, had a big ego, very into himself, that kind of thing. Um, he's kind of one of those guys who doesn't care what other people think. And um, I remember one time we, when I was married to my ex-husband, um, they happened to be working together because they're in the same industry. And... I was staying at a hotel with my ex-husband and he came over, my husband now, and he was like, oh, we're going to the strip club. Like, do you guys want to go? And we had our son who was at the time, he was only about a year old, uh, maybe two years old. And my ex was like, no, he's like, I think we're going to stay here. We're going to go to the mall, whatever. And I was eating um, and I had a, a container of olives sitting on the table and I had a fork right next to it. And my husband, at the time he wasn't my husband, came up to the table, grabbed the jar of olives, and stuck his dirty fingers inside the olive container and started to eat the olives. I was so freaking pissed off because these guys had just gotten out of work and stuck his dirty hands into a clean jar of olives that he could tell was clearly eating that I had taken some out because I had a spoon right next to it and it was just like things like that that he always did like he never cared that he was inconveniencing people and it was just always really frustrating for me and very annoying um so it took me a while to warm up to him <clears throat> uh the next question are you more inclined to build your own empire or unleash the potential of others? Well, if you guys have been watching my channel for any length of time, 
it's very obviously build my own empire. You guys know that I have my own company, several companies actually, because I do have my own Etsy shop. Um, I'm also going to school, hoping to be able to open up my own practice one day. So yeah, definitely have to say building my own empire. Uh, are you more likely to avoid conflict or engage it head on? Honestly, I wouldn't say that I'm a drama queen, but even though I'm very much an introvert, if I feel strongly about something, I am not going to keep my mouth shut, especially when it's um, things close to me and things that actually involve me and I feel like it's right or wrong or, you know, something along those lines. I voice my thoughts and opinions. Um... My husband's usually the one to get more of that than anybody else because obviously everything that my husband does very much affects, you know, our life and my life and our children's lives and things like that. So I wouldn't say argue, but if it's something that ultimately is going to affect me, then yes, I do confront it head on. Um, let me see here. Do you believe ignorance is bliss? Why or why not? Yes, I do. And I say that because when you look at things, and I really hate to get political here, but when you look at things like um, political things and things about culture and stuff like that, um, people who do not know about things, who ignore it, tend to not realize or understand that there's problems or understand like or think that people are different um my kids for example my stepdaughter um her and her mom had to move back in with her grandparents which is her mom's mom and dad and i i guess they went and bought a house that was in kind of um a not so great neighborhood and the the house itself isn't um what my girls are used to and you know we do visit family and everybody has different houses and stuff but my daughters made the comment that the area that they lived in was I don't remember the exact word that that they used but that it was ugly or something and that it was like trashy and it just really goes to show, like, we live in a nice neighborhood and my daughters just are completely unaware of other people's living situations and things like that, that they didn't know that they were being mean or rude, you know, to be saying those types of things. So it just goes to show. And I mean, I hate to say that it's like ignorant, but it kind of is because they tend to think that everybody lives like them. Not, I mean, and I don't mean just my girls, but even adults as well. They tend to kind of out of sight, out of mind and tend to think that, you know, everybody, um, that if you don't like, I don't know how to explain it. I'm sure you guys understand what I mean, that um, they, they can't concern themselves with anything below, like, themselves, if that makes sense. Um, let's see, what number was that? Okay. Uh, do you have a hidden dream that you've never shared with anyone? A hidden dream. Um... Not really. Uh, I have several dreams. One of them is being able to travel the world. Um, but that's not really a secret. My husband, you know, knows more about it than probably anybody else does. Um, another dream is that I've always dreamt of owning my own business and... Like, even though I do own my own business, my own business in the sense that I actually have, like, not necessarily a storefront, but I'd really love to have an office um, and, you know, plenty of storage and things like that. Um, that's just something that I've always tried to strive towards. When I had my soap making company, um, I was very close to renting a retail space. 
Uh, instead, I just decided to shut down the business instead of renting a retail space. But I could have done it then, um, but it just didn't work out that way. Uh, let's see. Do you have a whole lot of acquaintances or just a few very close friends? At this point, I have a whole lot of acquaintances. Um, I have met people through college, but it's not really people, like at this point, it's not really anybody that I invite over. We don't really hang out. I do have to say, though, that I do have a group of ladies that I just happen to be partnered with in my class, my couple of my classes, actually, because we all take the same classes. Um, we have all gotten very close. They are, two of them are older than me, and I think that that's why um, we're able to connect the way that we are. Uh, but for the most part, I just have acquaintances. Again, if you guys have watched any of my other whip and chats in the Who the Fuck Am I section, you will know most of the reason why I don't have a lot of close friends. Uh, let's see. Do you hold any convictions that you would be willing to die for? No. I don't think. And I may be thinking of this in the wrong context, but I don't think. I do, to be completely honest. I might come back to this question after I've had a few minutes to think about it. But to be completely honest, I don't think I do. Like, uh, No, honestly, I, I don't think I do. Let's see. Where did I leave off? Okay. Um, do you prefer that people shoot straight with you or temper their words and why? I need people to tell it to me straight. I freaking hate when I am given the runaround. I hate when people try to sugarcoat things. I hate when people try to um, tell me something that's different other than what it is, if that makes any sense. Like, don't give me the runaround. Don't give me a bunch of filler info because you can't tell me the truth or anything like that. I, where did that drill go? Oh, there it is. I just want to be told the truth. That is all that I ever ask of anybody is to just tell me the damn truth. That is it. I don't give a shit about anything else. Just be straight up with me. Like that is something that I absolutely cannot stand is when somebody can't just tell you something the way that it is. It doesn't matter what kind of situation it is, even if you're like car broke down or if your husband cheated on you or if your friend really just doesn't want to hang out with you that weekend I don't want to hear a bunch of bullshit give me the straight up honest answer and that's it you know who cares like everybody's so worried about hurting somebody's feelings but to me I would just much rather tell somebody the truth and not have to be like thinking up all kinds of crazy stories. My husband, he's super bad at that. He's kind of a people pleaser and he really cares like what people say about him and say about us and especially me. There's just times where he'll be like driving home and then I won't hear from him for like a couple of hours and I'll think that he should have been home by now so I'll call him and he'll be like, oh yeah, I'm coming into the town. I'm coming into Cruces because we live in Las Cruces. And I'll be like, okay. And then like another two hours will go by and he still won't be here. And I'll be calling and calling like worried, freaking out. And it makes the situation worse because he's telling me that he's close and then he doesn't answer and I think that something's wrong. But the reality is that he left much later than he told me he was leaving. And I don't even care if you're not on time. I just care that you can tell me the truth. He doesn't do that anymore. He has gotten a lot better at that because it just honestly causes so much more problems for him to just give me the run around instead of just saying like I was fucking off and didn't leave when I was supposed to. You know, like seriously, come on, just say it. Uh, have you forgiven yourself for past personal failures? Why or why not? Yes, I have. Um, as a lot of you know, and you've heard me even say in this video, I was married once before and it's kind of hard 
to um, think about the future when you're going through like a divorce and things like that um, because you tend to put a lot of blame on yourself and the reality of it was was that my first marriage did not end because of me you know and it took a lot to kind of come to terms with um moving on because when you get married nobody is planning for divorce you know especially when you're as young as I was um my first husband and I were high school sweethearts we were together for several years in high school he was a year older than me so he was already graduated when I was doing my senior year and um you know he we still stayed together you know, and then I got pregnant right away and we got married really young. I had my first son when I was 18 years old, moved right away after high school to uh, a town, which I hadn't previously lived in this town. It was actually the town that my mom was living in because when I was in high school, I did not live with my mom. Um... So it was kind of like moving back home, but kind of not at the same time. And we got married when I was 20 years old. He was 21. We got married and it was like, we hadn't been married, you know, obviously before that, but we'd already had bought a house together. We'd already um, had a kid together. And it was like, when we got married, everything went downhill and I honestly think it's because I was growing up, I was a little bit more perceptive and I was able to kind of decipher his behaviors at that point. And there was a lot of things going on that shouldn't have been going on. You guys pretty much know about that. I'm not going to go into those details again, but if you want to know, go watch my Who the Fuck Am I videos <laughs> again, because that will um, reiterate all of that nonsense for you guys. Um, let me see. I don't know what question that was. I'm sorry. Okay. How difficult is it for you to be honest, even when your words may be hurtful or unpopular? Well, to be completely honest, <laughs> like you guys want me to be, it's not very hard. Um, I am kind of one of those shooted straight people, like another question, that, you know, I just answered and I don't see any point in lying. Like to me, for the most part, it makes it worse when you lie because then when something else comes up, like you just have to figure out something else for the situation or the story or whatever it is and it's pointless like it truly is and then you just have to keep lying and piling like lie on top of lie and it doesn't make any sense you know so I would very much rather just tell somebody the truth and not have to worry about it and that is something that everybody knows about me is that they know that when you're dealing with me, you're pretty much going to get an honest answer. It, even like my in-laws know that about me. Um, I, I'm one of those people too that I have a hard time like not expressing my emotions in my face. So everybody already knows that... Whatever answer I'm giving you is the honest answer because of the look on my face. I don't, there's a, I think there's a word for that. I can't remember what it is exactly, but yeah, I can't hide my emotions at all. Um, my face will give it away. You know, there's just no way around it. So there's that. Um, this canvas on the bottom is so confetti. Uh, I didn't realize that when we were doing the rendering until I started working it up, but it's kind of like a good confetti because there's so much of it. And if you like checkerboard, you guys are going to love this canvas because a lot of the drills 
are like especially let me see over here on this side everything is laid in such a way that it's kind of like a checkerboard so if you guys do checkerboard like you can kind of see you guys are gonna love this canvas just saying you know so let me see what else we have uh if you could change one thing about the world regardless of guilt or politics what would you do about the world um there's a lot of things actually a lot of things um i've taken a lot of history in college and one of the things that i would change is racism that is a big one i would definitely change that and another thing that i would change is like poverty and poor um like what's considered poor standards and that type of thing i would change that because i could have sworn i saw why i heard it um because children and a lot of people don't deserve to live that way and i think that a lot of things should be more equal in the world um even though it's kind of like one of those things that everybody should work for themselves and um it's not like the government's responsibility to feed you and it's not the town's responsibility type of thing but at the same time especially when it comes to children like None of us asked to be born. You know, you guys can't even see that section that I'm doing. None of us asked to be born. And it's kind of unfair when it comes to a lot of things that it's a lot more difficult for some people to get access to a lot of things, like a decent meal, which is why a lot of places now have that. Um, it used to be called the No Child Left Behind Act, and now it's called something different. Um, and also education, you know, mainly education i think that this world would be a better functioning society if education was more accessible for um adults who aren't as advantaged i would absolutely love if colleges had a daycare um even if it had to be part of tuition you know what i mean like it would just be an amazing thing. There's so many times that I've had to miss school because of my kids. And it would it would just be, like, so great. And I know, and I'm not talking, like, if you disagree, that's completely fine. You know, I'm not here to argue. We had a giant list, and we kind of jumped around questions. So, it takes me a second to find them. So what do you consider unforgivable? You know, I'm a pretty forgiving person. I'm not going to lie. But there are a few things that I myself just would not be able to forgive a person for after a certain extent. Um, one of those things is um, lying to me. Um, I can handle being lied to for certain things and I know that that's a bad thing because I know that I don't want to say that everybody lies but that's kind of like a given context is that everybody lies even though they don't but if you and this mainly comes like from very personal relationships like my marriage like if you cheat on me if you tell me the truth I'm probably, I'm not going to say I'm going to be okay with it, but I'm more inclined to, like, try to want to work things out if that person is still, want and I speak from experience, you guys, um, it's easy to say that, oh, like, if my husband cheats on me or my wife cheats on me, I would never forgive them, because I used to say that too, and then I was put in that situation, you know, so... Um, I'm more inclined to help you if you can admit, like, your faults and, like, work through it and try to change. What I consider unforgivable, though, would be, um, if you did it again, you know, even if it had nothing to do with cheating, if it was something else, 
that would be completely unforgivable or um like abandoning the person at a time in their life anytime actually you know like say you were close and they all of a sudden disappeared um I don't know if you guys ever saw that that show on TV with Jennifer Love Hewitt that was out a long time ago called The Client List. In that show, her husband just up and left. Like, he was, like, depressed or something. And he just left her. And they had, like, two kids, I think. Two or three kids. I don't recall. And he just never came home one day. And he was gone for a long time. And just left her there with everything to handle on her own and in the show he comes back and to be completely honest if that ever happened to me that is something that is completely unforgivable there would be no way in hell that I would forgive you if you did that to me I think even a friend if a friend did that like left me their kid or you know something like I don't know it would just be crazy there's not a whole lot of things that I would think would be completely unforgivable I mean unless like you murdered somebody then yeah that's that's different uh let's see actually going through these a lot quicker than I thought so the last one is what has required the most courage of you in your life so far? Honestly, it has been going to school and staying in school. And like college, it's just a crazy thing. I thought that I was too old at this point to go back to school. Uh, I actually went into the nursing program and... I was very discouraged in the nursing program because here, I don't know about everywhere, but here, the nursing program is such an exclusive program and very difficult to uh, maintain and manage and even get in in the first place that I was constantly discouraged about like everything um there was a time where I was in the nursing program and I was like I don't want to do this anymore I was miserable the whole time and I was trying to figure out what other major I could go into that wouldn't put me in a situation where everything that I had done up until that point was going to be a complete waste Uh, because when you go to college you know you do have basic classes but then you get to a certain point where none of the classes you take are basics anymore they're all required classes so there was very few majors that I could choose um, that weren't going to put all of the work that I had done like completely in the trash Uh, Because I had taken a bunch of medical science kind of classes. And anything other than a medical profession wasn't going to call for those classes. And so one of the classes that I was going to, I mean, one of the programs that I was going to go to was the dental hygienist program. And I was in contact with the person who runs the program and he was looking through my Actually, I don't remember if it was a guy or a girl, but they were looking through my transcripts and asking me a bunch of questions, you know, and they were like, well, why are you switching over from nursing and this and that? And I told them that I hated the program. And instead of trying to, like, encourage me because I was considering their program instead, they just flat out said, okay, you're not the right candidate for this program then. And I was like, what? And it's not as exclusive as the nursing program. And on paper, I had everything I needed to get in. So there shouldn't have really have been like any issues like keeping me back from getting into the, the dental program. And he was like, they were like, well, if you don't like nursing, you're not going to like it here. And I said, well, why? 
and they looked at some of my grades and I got a C in one of my nursing classes because it was so hard and they told me well you have pretty much A's and B's but this class you got a C in they're like if you can't do well in that class you're not going to do well in the program and they just absolutely refused to um continue like our conversation back and forth because we were doing it in email at the time and I was really discouraged at that point and took I took a semester off because I was so frustrated with everything I actually did I take a year off no I think yeah I think it was a semester well if you count the summer too you know that would be two semesters but it was a summer and a semester and um when I came back, I came back full force and in full swing, completely renewed with what I wanted to do. I'd given it a lot of thought and decided on psychology. All of the classes that I have taken weren't going to go to waste because um, I could use them in other aspects of the degree. Like some of the science classes that I had taken, you have to take so many classes from certain sections and every class is broken up into a certain section the way that my school numbers it, it's usually like one two three four five then it's broken down into like subject and stuff and you need so many classes from every section so some of the classes that i took uh counted as the classes from that section and then only two classes left over had to get applied as electives however what that meant for me was that i could continue my the psychology program and then I would essentially be taking all core psychology classes because I used my electives already taking the nursing program classes so that worked out really well in my opinion because I don't have to waste time with filler classes I think probably well like when I get to graduate level then I will have more electives that I have to take but for now at the level that I'm at now none of that matters So yeah, that's pretty much it, you guys. Um, this video is actually a decent length already. Um, this is this corner is all that I have done on this canvas. I'm hoping to be able to maybe get my husband to help me a little bit later. He's not really into diamond painting, but if I ask him, he will participate. I'd really like to get this whole bottom section done. I feel like it's taking me a little bit longer because it's so confetti. And this right here oh man that's gonna be really confetti as well i don't and i think the sky is gonna be a little easier let's say well i don't know what did i get myself into guys yeah this canvas is just confetti in general but you know <sighs> sometimes that's what you pay for um a gorgeous image so that is it for now i hope you guys enjoyed this video and i hope you guys are enjoying this um series with mindy um, we have a lot of plans for the future, so I just hope that we can continue the momentum and these keep working out in the manner that they are. Um, I'm sorry that in this video, I am still sick. I mentioned this in another video that if you guys watch a video and, and I sound like this, and then the next day you watch another video and I don't sound like this, but then a week later you see another video and I sound awful still. That's because of the way that I record my videos and the way that they go up. I deeply apologize. Um, they're recorded in order for me. So I'm sick in a whole bunch of videos at once. But then the way that they go up, they're broken down to just be unmatched. <laughs> but it is what it is. That is all for now, you guys. I want to thank everybody who's been supporting me thus far. You guys have been amazing. Um, especially in the adult bullying video, which is the first video of the series that Mindy and I have done. I've got so much positive feedback from that video. People commented on that video that I didn't even know watched my channel. And I am just so grateful for everybody after that whole first negative experience I had in the diamond painting community to be where I'm at right now and to be on the path that I am. You guys have no idea what that means. 
Um, I just hope that I can still keep you guys entertained and bring you guys awesome products at the same time. So with that being said, if you haven't already, go watch Mindy's video to see the answers to her questions. She will be answering the same questions as I am. And her link to her channel will be in the description box below. So that being said, that is all for now. I will catch you guys in the next video. Thank you for tuning in.